ever like to make up words? Sometimes it can be fun to play about with the sounds of letters and make up some nonsense words that tickle your ears and make you laugh out loud. When I was a little girl, I remember watching the movie Mary Poppins for the first time and heeding that ridiculously long made-up word, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. My friends and I had great fun chanting that word over and over, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Try it. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Hello everyone, I'm Kathleen Pally. Welcome to Journey with Story. Today's story is a terribly silly nonsense poem story about a made-up creature called a pobble who has no toes. It was written by Edward Lear, who wrote a lot of nonsense poems that are tremendous fun to read aloud. See if you can hear some of his made-up words in this poem. Let's take a journey then with The Pobble Who Has No Toes. The Pobble Who Has No Toes had once as many as we. When they said, Some day you may lose them all, he replied, Fish fiddle did he. And his Aunt Jibiska made him drink lavender water tinged with pink, for she said, The world in general knows there's nothing so good for a Pobble's toes. The Pobble Who Has No Toes swam across the Bristol Channel, but before he set out he wrapped his nose in a piece of scarlet flannel, for his Aunt Jibiska said, No harm can come to his toes if his nose is warm, and it's perfectly known that a Pobble's toes are safe, provided he minds his nose. The Pobble swam fast and well, and when boats or ships came near him, he tinkeredly Bickledy winkle the bell so that all the world could hear him and all the sailors and admirals cried when they saw him nearing the further side. <coughs> he has gone to fish for his Aunt Jibiska's runcible cat with crimson whiskers. But before he touched the shore, the shore of the Bristol Channel, a sea green porpoise carried away his wrapper of scarlet flannel and when he came to observe his feet, Formerly garnished with toes so neat, his face at once became forlorn on perceiving that all his toes were gone. <gasps> and nobody ever knew from that dark day to the present who so had taken the bubble's toes in a manner so far from pleasant, whether the shrimps or crawfish grey. A crafty mermaid stole them away. Nobody knew, and nobody knows how the pobble was robbed of his twice five toes. The pobble who has no toes was placed in a friendly bark, and they wrote him back and carried him up to his Aunt Jabiscus Park, and she made him a feast at his earnest wish of eggs and buttercups fried with fish, and she said... It's a fact the whole world knows that Pobbles are happier without their toes. Did you catch some of those made-up words like tinkledly, binkledy, winkled, a bell? And what about that runcible cat? Runcible is a word that Edward Lear invented and he used multiple times in many of his other poems but no one really knows for sure what it means. But it certainly is fun to say, isn't it? A runcible. So, what do you think a pobble looks like? Or a runcible cat with crimson whiskers? Or crafty mermaids? Or even Aunt Jabiska herself? Why don't you try drawing one of them and send it to me? We'd love to have those pictures to share with everyone. It'd be fun to see all the different versions of a pobble or of a runcible cat. Big thanks to Megan in Seattle for sending me her picture from the King with Horse's Ears story. Cheerio then. Join me next time for Journey with Story. Story.